And so we're going to look at the first two passages in Ishai Upanishad and explore them and listen to them. When we listen to these teachings, it's as though we're back in the forest of the ancient days where the sage has returned from his or her meditative uh, practice with a revelation. So we listen with a meditative ear, with an undefended heart, not to believe, but to step into, to step into the perception, to step into the attitude, to step into the stance and the, re and the recognition that is encoded in these words. Isha Upanishad section one says, all that exists is of radiance. Claim nothing. Cling to no thing that it clings not to you. Find the Lord, the radiant, generative presence that dwells in the heart of each person, event, or thing. Know that the form is not the essence of what appears before you. Covet not forms. There's so much in this. First, it begins with this idea of letting go and not claiming. But this means that you can appreciate and love and serve and care for the life that is in front of you, but not claim it as mine, not claim it to the self, not create an identity that is identified with particular patterns of people, events, and things. But at the same time, not to reject people, places, people, events, and things as a way of forming a special kind of spiritual identity. Rather, it says, tune in, find the radiant generative presence that dwells in the heart of each person, event, or thing. How do we do this? We do this by cultivating meditative awareness. As Patanjali says, Chitta Vritti Narodaha, the stilling, when we still the patternings of the mind, when we still the patternings of consciousness, then the self rests in the revelation of its own true nature. And as we more and more cultivate meditative awareness, and we are able to experience that which arises before us as person, as event, or as thing. We can experience it both in its form nature, but also in its essential radiance. Rather than uh, reject forms, rather than reject people, rather than reject things or events, we can relate to them skillfully and realize that in the heart of each being, that radiant generative presence resides. And that is the cause of all the movements. As the Gita says, in the heart of every being, the Lord, the radiant generative presence abides, propelling. It causes all to spin and life to be directed from deep, deep within. What does this mean? It means that our life is being directed, as it were, our life is being moved and motivated by that inner radiance, which is seeking one primary thing, which is to fulfill your deepest dream, to awaken your deepest longing, to realize your deepest call, which is to be the embodied presence of who you are, which is the radiance itself. No, the form is not the essence of what appears before you. The form is the, the dance. The form is the expression. The essence is the radiance. The text continues and says, not coveting or clinging to forms, you can live happily to your allotted time. Why? Because each moment then becomes a sacred moment. You live in sacred time as opposed to calendar time. Sacred time is the time of this present moment. The recognition that 
this moment is holy, is sacred, is beautiful, that the dew drop that is reflecting on the plants will be here but for a moment, that this conversation will be here but for a moment. And it is a unique revelation, a unique uh, angle, a unique emanation of the radiance. And so to appreciate it and to live fully, wholeheartedly, this moment. To learn more about these teachings, please visit us at wisdomheart.com and receive two free gifts just for visiting.